Hey kids, it's Mrs. Compton, and today we're going to do a review of some of your questions in your Go Math book for chapter one. All right, so the first question we're going to start off with is question number two. I'll have the number here in the corner, so if you lose your spot or you're wondering which question I'm doing, you can find it right there. All right, so it says, select the number of sentences that show the commutative property of addition. Mark all that apply. Okay, so what do we know about the word commute? It's related to the word commutative. So if you think about it, um, when we started with distance learning and all that stuff, we no longer really commuted places. We were staying at home, right? So commute means to move around, to drive around. All right, so in the commutative property, something is moving. So let's check this out. Here's A. 14 plus 8 is 22. Well, nothing moved there, so that one's out. All right, how about this one? B says 8 plus 14 is the same as 14 plus 8. All right, so things moved. 8 was in the beginning of the equation, on this side of the equation. And then on this side of the equation, it's at the end. So 8 and 14 swapped spots, so that means... That is part of the community property, or commutative property of addition, sorry. Um, but it says mark all that apply, so I have to keep going. All right, so now we have 8 plus, and in parentheses, 13 plus 1 is the same as, in parentheses, 8 plus 13, close parentheses, plus 1. Okay, so let's check. They moved the parentheses. But did the numbers move? Okay, just the parentheses moved. The numbers stayed in the same spot. So actually, this makes it the associative property. Associative, you can think about this. You associate with people, right? Or when you go to a store, you can ask for an associate. It's someone there in a group to help you, right? So this is the associative property. These are grouped together. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that one out. And now I'm going to look at this one. 5 plus 9 plus 8 is the same as 9 plus 5 plus 8. Okay, did anything move in that one? Did any numbers move in that one? Yes. Which numbers moved? Yep. The 5 and the 9 were in the beginning, or 5 was in the beginning, then 9, and then they swapped. So that means this one is also the commutative property of addition. Okay, you try saying it fast and see if you get stuck. Okay, get ready for number three. It's coming. Question three. Are you ready? Here it comes. Select the numbers that round to 300 when rounded to the nearest 100. Mark all that apply. Okay. So we're going to do some rounding, and my favorite way to round is on a number line because number lines just really make sense to me. Um, if they don't make sense to you, see if you can figure out what I'm doing here with the number line. All right, so let's see. If I were to count by hundreds, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, so on, those would be nearest hundreds, right, when we're thinking about multiples of 100. So I have to check and see, does 238 round to 100? So 238 is going to fall somewhere between 200 and 300. So those are going to be my endpoints on my number line. And then I want to think about what my midpoint would be. Do you guys remember what the midpoint would be? Say it if you know it. Did you say Did you say it? Did you say 250? Okay, we are rounding to the nearest hundred. So that means there can only be a difference of 100 from one end of the number line to the other end of the number line. So there can only be 100 in there. Now, we have to figure out if 238 is closer to 200 or 300. And I'm guessing you're probably already yelling at me. Do you know which one it's closer to? Yep, you got it. It's closer to the 200 because 
it would fall to the left of this middle mark right here. I'm going to estimate that 238 would probably go in here somewhere, and it would round to 200. So does that one round to 300? Nope. That one's out. We did all of that just to find out. Whoop! It didn't round to that one. Okay. So let's see, I'm gonna switch up my color so my number lines don't get all smashed together. Actually, no, I'll just erase my number line. Hello, beauty of an eraser. All right, this one is 250. All right, so again, we're gonna make a number line. We're gonna put the endpoints on there. So think, which 200s would be on either side of 250? So again, it's gonna be 200 and 300, which I distinctly remember last time we had 250 smack dab in the middle. Do you remember that? Done. Now we've got our number on there because that's what we're thinking about um, for our answers. So would this one be closer to 200 or closer to 300? Well, you might be telling me it's in the middle and you would be right. So if it's smack dab in the middle, we just go ahead and round it to the next hundred. So would that one round to 300? The answer to that is yes. I almost thought I made a mistake there. Okay, next up, 283. Let's get on, wait a minute. I can reuse that same number line. Huh. I'm just gonna reuse it because it would be between 200 and 300. And my middle point is still 250. Woohoo. Okay, so 283. Um, tell me when to stop. I'm going to start my marker right here, and I want you to yell, stop, when you think I should stop for number 283. Yeah? Oh. Okay, I think I heard it. Everybody's screaming. Probably somewhere right here. So would that one round to 300? The answer to that is yes. It's much closer to the 300 than it is to the 200, isn't it? Oh, where'd I go? All right, so that's a yes. Okay, looks like I have to change my number line for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and erase. Woo! Okay, so 342 would fall between 300 and 400. Now remember this, we are rounding to the nearest 100. So there can only be a distance of 100 between these two endpoints. That's it. Okay, so 342, my midpoint is right between. Well, if that's 100, I know this is going to be from here to here. That'll be 50, and then another 50. So that means this number is 100. Okay, now let's compare, or let's place 342 on our number line. Tell me when to stop. Right there? Jeez Louise, you guys don't have to yell so loud. Okay, now is 342 closer to 300 or 400? Well, this number, the middle number, helps guide us, right? So we can see. It's closer to 300. So that means this one is a yes. Okay, 359 is next. So let's see. I'm going to keep my endpoints 300 and 400. I'm going to get rid of my 342 and my arrow, but I'm going to keep everything else the same. So 359 would fall somewhere over here, maybe someplace like that. So you can see. It's closer to the 400. So it rounds up to 400, up the number line. Okay, so that means that one is out. Okay, kids, question number four is coming next. Please hold. Do you see it? I changed it. It's question number four time. Okay, so let's read it together. There are 486 books in the classroom library. Complete the chart to show 486 rounded to the nearest 10. 
All right. So we are going to use this here. I actually kind of want to just, I'm tempted to just put 486 here for a minute. Don't put it in your book. I just want you to see that eight is in the tens place, which I think you probably knew, right? Um, so the value of this eight is 80. And we have to round it to the nearest 10. So if we were counting by tens, we would say 480, 490. So if we were thinking about this number on our number line, we would say 480, 490. Those are going to be our answer choices for our endpoints. Now, since we're rounding to the nearest 10, we can only have a distance of 10 on our number line. That's kind of how I know if I got my endpoints on there right. So 480 plus 10 is 490. Okay, so I think I got it right. My midpoint would be 485. Now I have to place 486 on the number line. So I know that's gonna go somewhere around here. So that means, now I'm gonna erase this, that was just to help my eyes. Now I know that this one is gonna to round to the nearest 10 by going up to 490. So in here, I would write 490. That's it. Okay, up next is question number six, AKA six. We're back, it's number six. Okay, so we have got to read about Diana and Bob. They had a bake sale. Okay, Diana sold 336 muffins at the bake sale. Bob sold 287 muffins. Bob estimates that he sold 50 fewer muffins than Diana. How did he estimate? And then we have to make sure we explain. Okay, so let's see. What did good old Bob do? He had 287 and she had 336 and we know um, here's Diana, here's Bob. I'm gonna set those abbreviations out so we don't have to write their whole name. And Diana had 336, and Bob had 287 sold. Now, if we were rounding to the nearest 100, Diana would round to 300, and Bob would round to 300. And then we'd have to say, well, they sold about the same amount. So that can't be it. So that's not what Bob did. So what do you think Bob did? He obviously rounded. It says Bob estimates he sold 50 fewer muffins. So we know he didn't round to the nearest 100. Do you think he round to, rounded to the nearest 10? Let's find out. If we rounded 336 to the nearest 10, the answer would either be 330 or 340. Is it closer to 330, 340? What do you say? 340. Okay, if we rounded 287 to the nearest 10, the answer would either be 280 or 290. Okay, so this one's closer to 290. Okay, hmm. would that give us 50 fewer if Bob rounded that way? So let's see. Well, I know 200 plus 10 is 300, plus 40 more would give us 340. If that didn't make any sense to you, I'm gonna write out what I just said. So 290 plus 10 is 300, plus 40 more is 350. Oh, Take that back, it's 340. Okay, so all together, that is a difference of 50, because 10 plus 40 is 50. So Bob must have rounded to the nearest 10. Would you guys agree with that? I think so. Okay, are you ready for the next one? It is, I gotta look at my notes. Number nine. Okay, get ready for number nine. Back, and it's number nine. Are you ready for this one? Okay, choose the property that makes the statement true. The, we've got to choose one of those. So the identity, commutative or associative, property of addition, 
states that you can group add-ins in different ways and get the same sum. Okay, remember, sum is the answer to an addition problem. Okay, so let's read that again. The one of those, property of addition, states that you can group add-ins in different ways and get the same sum. All right, keyword here, group. All right, so if you are going to group something in a different way, that doesn't mean you're necessarily moving things around. It just means you're grouping things differently. For example, I might have 9 plus 2 plus 1, and I group the 9 and the 2 together. So I would do that part first, and I'd say 9 plus 2 is 11, I hope, and then add one more, which is 12, right? Okay, well, I could also do 9 plus 2 plus 1, one and group the two and the one together and then I would do that first and I would say that's three so then it would be nine plus three and it's still twelve so the hmm property of addition states that you can group add-ins in different ways group add-ins and get the same sum same sum same sum so is it identity commutative or associative. Things were grouped. They are associating just like you do on the playground or in your neighborhood or at the beach. Associate, group. That means our answer is associate. All right, kids, I think we're going to stop right here. This was um, the part one review of the chapter one review slash test. All right, see you for the second part. Bye.